Wales. You're the Wellington Phoenix captain. How does it feel? Oh, massive honour. I think uh, when the manager come into his office, um, had a good chat with us for about 30 minutes about what he demands from me, the team this year, and uh, the way he wants to play. It was uh, yeah, massive, massive honour. When I spoke to the family about it, you know, they were over the moon and myself as well. It's uh, it's going to be huge for us this season. So I'm looking forward to a lead from the front on a day-to-day -day basis with the boys as well, pushing the young boys coming through as well. Speaking of your family, you've got a really close connection with your dad through football, mm -hmm. and back when you were at Newcastle watching together on the terraces, how did how did he react when you told him that you'd been there? Kept oh, he was over the moon. I think uh, yeah, it was also a proud moment for obviously. Yeah. A father-son moment um, from the, the times we were on the uh, the terraces at Newcastle. Um, he took me every single Newcastle game. Got me to training three times a week, leaving work early, and uh, kind of always getting. He's always getting up early. I think every early game out here, he's always up at five o'clock in the morning, back home watching the game. And he's a proud guy. The amount of times he's watching all the other games and uh, watching the strikers, what they're doing, and ringing up saying, "Listen, you watch. Be careful, this guy, this guy, this guy." <laughs> It's a good thing and it's like, uh, yeah, he analyzes everything. So he's kind of the guy who I go to with um, when it comes to football talk, yeah. Is he going to bring him out here to watch a game? He'll come off for the final. I think we'll get him off for the final and uh, yeah, let him hold the cup with us when I lift it. Definitely. It'll be a nice moment for us that. Right there. We've been waiting to hear who the captain's going to be for this season for quite some time. When did you actually find out that you'd be putting that armband on? So I found out last week. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, just got into the training ground early. The manager wanted to pull me into his office, and then we had a good chat. Uh, I just thought he was going to talk me through the training session, and next thing I know, he's, uh, he's offered me the captaincy. So um, it was, um, yeah, like I said before, what a massive honour. Unbelievable feeling for myself. Um, and yeah, I've got to perform day in, day out, and obviously lead by example on the pitch and off the pitch as well. So I'm around the top players, obviously, Alex Roofer as well, who's going to be the vice captain. Um, outstanding season he had last year. And for me now, I've just got to drive the young boys. We've got Dave Baller, who's obviously come across from the UK, top player, a uh, good character around the uh, dressing room, and a player we're very lucky to have. Speaking of Rufa, to give you guys a dynamic duo, really, how do you see you both working together, and are you going to play a role in his development throughout the season as well? We just continue exactly what we did last year. I think both on and off the pitch, we drive each other on the pitch uh, all the time. You know, we're in each other's uh, heads every every single second on that pitch, and we've always got each other's backs. I think it's a, a good bond that me and uh, Alex have got in training as well. You know, I can always rely on him. Uh, there's times last season where we found the games hard, and he's always the one I know I can count on, who will always give 100%. And he was like what I was like when I was growing up, always 100%, and do that extra. And uh, you know, having players like that around me as well is huge. And I think I'm very lucky to have that. Throughout your career as a player, you've played under some amazing captains yourself, Alan Shearer and Gary Speed. What have you learnt from them and what do you want to take into the season? I think looking at the way they did their things and speaking to them when they were playing and the little tips was basically you've got to lead by example on the pitch, people will follow. He said you can talk as much as you want, I think, off the pitch and um, you see so many captains out there uh, who are very good talkers off the pitch in the kind of dressing room, very loud, very vocal, but on the pitch they go missing and they don't quite give it where the rest of the lads are looking for someone to lead them. And when the tough, obviously there would be some tough games this season, like there was last year, and there would be times where we're maybe not playing well or getting beat, and that's when you need your leaders to come out and, and get your young boys firing, and uh, when they see that, you've got to raise the bar a bit, and I think the standards as well, you can't let the standards drop. This club now is moving forward. I think last season, it hurt us a lot. I think when I was at the launch and speaking to uh, the other A League players, I had to sit there and everyone talking about Wooden Spoon, Wellington Phoenix. And it still gets me. And it's, obviously, that was the fire in my belly of how we were written off at the start of the season. And everyone kind of judges from the previous years. I think it was the five games they won the previous year uh, before I came here. And that was frustrating. I think that was kind of the, the fight that I wanted um, and to prove the, everyone wrong. And we went under the radar, I think, surprised a lot of people. And uh, for the squad that we had last year, finishing six, I think was, uh, it was probably about right. Mm -hmm. But I think the squad this year, uh, we've got some young legs in the side, some fresh faces, people that prove a point. And I know what it's like when you've come from a, a team and you've had a few injuries and you want to prove yourself and you've, you may be out of favour with the manager. You come in now and you want to prove a point. Everyone's on an even keel. 
new managers come in with a new era, new ideas. Um, so for me, it's a, we've got a hungry group of lads and it's, uh, it's exciting to watch them in training and the lads uh, are getting told us and we're going to take it easy today and everyone's firing about and it's, it's great to see that. And uh, they're all comparing what GPS, how, how high you're doing this stuff and it's good competition, but you need that. Yeah. And the little games we'll have and losing side, we're going to now make you get fined if you lose. So we're going to drive that so there'll be a few people out of pocket in a month. <laughs> but no, we, you, you have to have that kind of hunger and that's the success that we're going to bring is winning mentality. And that's the kind of success I want to bring to this football club. I want to leave my legacy here and I see myself here long term. And, um, you know, the, the owners that are here, they're doing the right stuff. The lads, they're, they're pumping the food into the football club. For the lunch time is helping a lot of the, the lads and the lads can take the food home and just little things like that make a difference. And um, we've given all the tools with Greeny and Goffey. All the lads have got, you know, all the data they need to have a look at. Um, so there's no excuses coming to match day. We're going to be well drilled in what we want, what we asked for. The manager's very strict on, in training sessions, he said, listen, I'm not going to be like a teacher at school where I'm going to tell you to do this, 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 this. Figure out yourself sometimes on the pitch. You've you got to be men and you're here for a reason to kind of like, what got you here? What got you as a professional football? Everybody's different. You may put the qualities together and, and express yourself. You just want the lads to, to play the freedom more than anything, I think, and enjoying it. He says, even if you're getting beat, I just want you to enjoy it. Keep playing, just keep playing. And, uh, enjoy the ball. And uh, that's one thing we've been doing from day one, get the ball out. And that's very unusual for pre-season. So it's nice to see that. But the success that he's had is now what he's bringing to the football club and what's worked. Obviously worked last year for Sydney. But uh, yeah, he's driving that forward and it's exciting to be around. When we look at our squad, it is very youthful. There's a lot of young players. I think the average age of the squad now is about 23, 24. Yeah. That young talent, that fight is, is great, but how do you balance that and what role as the captain will you do to ensure that they stay grounded and level headed? And I think the only thing I could say to the lads is, listen, if you're good enough, you're old enough. You know, age is a number. It don't matter whether you're 16 or you're 38 or, or whatever. It's if, you're, if you're performing day in, day out, you're training hard, you're playing well, you're in the games, then there's no reason why people are on about age, the youngsters, all this kind of stuff. You perform well, you play. And the manager's made it very clear there. And like I said to you, we've got a hungry squad. And seeing them there, they're working like dogs in training. It's made me work hard as well. I'm loving it. And it's, it's exciting. Like literally, you can go back, I could go back to the UK and see certain players who are more about the lifestyle and the kind of being a footballer. Where I've got lads who want to go to the next level. They're seeing what Sapri Singh's done going to Germany, one of the best clubs in the world, Bayern Munich. If that doesn't wet your lips and want you to go to the next level, you're in the wrong game. And that's why I think Wellington now, for New Zealand football, the, all the young kids who are coming through, that's what they should be looking at. And that's the benchmark, I would say, for the young Kiwi kids who've got coming through the ranks, is that they've got to be looking at Sapri Singh and saying, I want to be at a top European club. And that's the ambition, you've got to test yourself, get out of comfort zone and uh, get the sacrifices written down and say, oh, you have to sacrifice all that if I want to get to there. And uh, you know, you'll always have your family back home here, but you want to test yourself as a professional footballer and where do you want to leave your legacy? That's how I would say to them. As the captain for Wellington Phoenix, what does success look like to you? Winning, that's the only thing I play for. You win and uh, yeah, that's, there's nothing else to it really. Just you get as a group of lads who want to fight for one thing and lift trophies and uh, produce success for this football club, take them to the next level and making it a force. And we've got everything there, but it's down to us as players to do that. And uh, the manager wants that. And to give the best opportunity we can do is, they give us all the tools, it's down to us as players to deliver on the pitch. And every game is going to be difficult. You know how it was last year, anybody can beat anybody. So we'll continue to do that and just hope that we can uh, have a good season. And uh, yeah, let's break some more records as well. Do you have a, a message to the fans for this season? Absolutely. Get yourselves to the stadium. I want, to, I want a record crowd. Honestly, it frustrated me last year. I want to see at least between 15 and 20, at least. Ooh. So I, I think that's the thing, because it makes such a difference as players. When you watch that, you see the crowds come. It's uh, the noise and that feel. That's what you want to be a footballer for, the big occasions for turning up a match day and seeing the crowd. and. It's like me and my dad when we used to go to the games, is that's when you fall in love with football, turn up to the games. Um, you see your heroes and who you want to be like and all these young kids now, they should be a spider to, to want to be the next Sapri Singh to kind of go on the next level. And 
uh, football's become massive now, I think, for Wellington, and it used to be very rugby dominated out here. And I think the football kind of, especially young kids going to schools and speaking to the lads in the universities, it's, it's a huge thing now. You know, they really want to get into it. They can see how football's just got the next level. And uh, it's an exciting time for, for football out here. But obviously want to drive that from New Zealand football I know in Auckland at the moment, but want to bring everything in Wellington and, <laughs> and drive it big. And there's no reason why we can't now. And just lastly from me, um, if you had to describe what Welli the Wellington Phoenix Football Club was about to somebody, how would you describe it? Obviously the passion. I think that the passion in the whole football club is just a sleeping giant. I think it's just ready for that success to take off. But that's down to us as players to deliver. If we can do that, then pff, this could be humongous. Like literally the, the stadium itself that we're playing, probably the best pitch in the, uh, the A-League and the crowds as well, they deserve success here. And uh, for many years now, they haven't had that. And I want to try and bring something special for this football club and really drive it forward now. And I'm in the right hands. We've got a top manager who's had success, the young players who are hungry, and they're all there. They want that one thing and they want, and that's to win. Well, congratulations on being named captain. Thank you very much. For the season. Appreciate it.